Hello Mr. Rispers Mind Screen. So I thought it would be fun to uh, do another Steelbook collection because it's been a while since I've done my last one. Obviously the last one I had to split into two parts which uh, um, wasn't ideal at the time but uh, I, I just did it anyway. Um, but I thought it was high time I, I showed you my, my Steelbook collection as of 2020. Um, I'm actually recording this in 2019 but it will go up in the new year so it's all weird. Um, but yeah I've, I haven't counted properly but I, I estimate that I've got about 50 to 60 titles in my collection I think when I did the last one I had about 40 to 50 so it's gone up a bit usually with steelbooks now I'm, I'm a lot less sort of eager to pick them up and double dip especially if there's no new content on the disc itself I've become a lot more restrained with that kind of thing um, but occasionally one will take my my eye and I will I will pick it up and double dip but um I have become a lot more restraint. I I have exercised a lot more restraint on um on that front. So uh, I'll show you them anyway. This obviously won't be in depth, just showing you quickly and discussing brief details about them. So I have tried to put them in order, roughly. They're all sort of here next to me, but they were they will be sort of all over the place. But we will start off with the Doctor Who steel books. Okay, so first one on is Spearhead from Space. I've showcased this before, done a review of it. Really nice artwork there. On the back as well. The back artwork is just a really nice image of John Pertwee as a spine. All of these are in um, protective bags that I bought um, because I noticed some of them were getting dinged up from just being taken off the shelf all the time and scratches and stuff. So I decided to invest in these bags. And I've got them on most of my steelbooks. Not all of them, but most of them. Just so I can protect them a bit, really. Um, see, I've obviously left the J card on here. But yeah, it's Spearhead from Space. It's a great blue release, great story, and a great steelbook. I mean, a lot of people have got this and. Um, it's a cracker to have. And then we have the Macro Terror. So this was the animation. Obviously I did a review of this very, very recently. So you can go and check that out. Very nice artwork there. It's the Macro Terror. Good animation, good story. Good steelbook. And then we have Power of the Daleks. This one's getting a bit dinged up. I don't know if you can see. But I really sort of got this one in a uh, in a sleeve quite quickly. Because it's starting to get a bit dinged up. Uh, which is the same because it's really nice artwork. Quite uh, quite chunky. These, these um, missing episode animation ones are quite. They've got a bit of weight to them because they've got quite a number of discs in. I think this is. It's got four discs in. It's got Blu-rays and DVDs in there. Uh, so this one's really nice. Uh, really like that one. And then in a similar vein, we've got Sharda. This one's three discs. I remember when uh, the art was announced on this. I was a bit sort of. I don't know, it looks a bit weird, but actually in hand. Yeah, it does look quite nice. And uh, obviously, I, I won't show you now, but it uh, it does wrap around to the other side. Uh, when the J card isn't on it, uh, but yeah, I uh, was really impressed with this actually. I don't think I've talked about it that much before, but the 2017 version of Sharda was was really good. I thought actually it was um, really nicely put together and uh, probably the definitive way to experience the story now. So yeah, uh, then we get into the new series era of the Seal books. Uh, I've talked about these a lot on the channel. Series 1, which is absolutely lovely. The, these new series still books are some of my favourites in my collection. I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. And you can see the artwork on the back. That The back artwork on this is obviously just a fully blown up version of that. And uh, yep, so there's Series 1. And Series 2, probably my favourite, I want to say, out of these. It just looks really nice. I know a lot of people sort of criticise Billy Piper's appearance on it. I don't know, I just think it's really nice and stylized. And this came with some art cards which I've got hung up on my wall. So yeah, that's series two. Series three took a bit of a step down in the artwork department, unfortunately, but it's still quite nice. Then after a long delay, they finally uh, got round to doing series four, which is really nice. I love the light effect on that. That's really good there. And then one of my very recent videos was of this, the special steelbook. Love the light effect on that as well. And this was notable because it actually included new material on the disc, which was uh, which was really cool actually. I didn't expect them to do that. It was new new discs for this, which was uh, really cool. Uh, and I, I guess I'll chuck this one in as well. Now that I'm thinking about it, just in here, I will chuck in this, which is the series five tin edition. It does actually, inside it does say Steelbook, um, just there. But obviously we're getting a proper Series 5 Steelbook now uh, in, the, in the coming months. But this thing is wrecked. Look at that. I, got, I did get this second hand, but it wasn't nearly as, as bad as this when I got it. I don't know what's happened to it, but the paint's just been 
scraping away over time, which is a shame. I I'm, can't wait to replace this with the actual, with the better steel book. But yeah, I thought I'd include it because it is technically a steel book. But uh, yeah. And then rounding off the Doctor Who section, we've got series 10. That's really nice. Got this for my birthday a few years ago. And uh, usually I leave the J card on ones that have sort of cardboard J cards. Um, usually with paper ones or plastic ones, I'll take them off. But these. Uh, I leave on, but this is an exception because this is recently got this signed by Pearl Mackey, who plays Bill, and you can just about read the writing there. Lovely meeting you, Pearl Mackey. So there we go. I thought I'd leave the J card off just so I can see that all the time. But I'm kind of now afraid to take it out of the sleeve because I just I want to protect it forever because that that's just that's really nice. So, uh, but yeah, series ten. So the next one on the pile, um, this, way, this is where the order sort of goes out the window, it's sort of roughly grouped together but it's it's a bit of a mess um, so bear with me. But we've got Ready Player One, I think this is the 3D edition, yeah it is, this is 3D on the side. This one's quite nice, uh, it, it's nothing special but it's got some cool light effects on it with the sort of retro style grid and the egg and the keys on the back. Yeah, Ready Player One. And I got this recently for a pound in CEX, um, so I was happy to double dip on this actually because uh, this film I haven't got the uncensored version of it and it comes in this set so I was happy to double dip on this and it is The Hunger Games. And it's really nice simple steelbook, obviously the cards in a way but it's literally just the, 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 the pin badge, Mockingjay pin badge. Uh, so it's really nice and it's three discs and it's got the uncut version of the film and the censored cinema version on DVD um, and I had the censored version on Blu-ray but I sort of upgraded to this because it's it's not a film that I, I love or anything I just I, I want to see the uncensored version so um, and for a pound and for a nice steelbook I thought might as well pick it up uh, then we have a bit of a pair we've got oh, stuck together a bit there from the Cellophane. Uh, the Lego Movie. This is the special, special edition. Uh, I double dipped on this one just because the artwork is really nice on it. Uh, really simple and really sort of vibrant. Uh, and it's got a new disc of special features in this one that wasn't in the original release. So double dipped on that and it's really nice. There's the back. Uh, and then the Lego Batman Movie. Uh, pretty cool design. Nothing special or anything, but. These uh, these Lego movies are a lot of fun. Although this, <laughs> these two are the only ones I've seen. I didn't see Ninjago or the second one, uh, second Lego movie, which I meant to see, but I just sort of never got around to it. But uh, yeah, I've got these, and they're both really good. <sighs> Fantastic Beasts 3D. Um, not a bad steelbook. It's it's okay. The 3D annoys me. I wish it wasn't there. Um, the light effects are pretty pretty cool. The back is really nice. However, it's just this really simple picture of Newt. It's got a few sort of light effects on it, uh, but yeah, nothing special on this one. Uh, I probably wouldn't have picked it up now, but I, I did when it came out. I didn't pick up the second one on Steelbook. I, ha I didn't see it in the cinema. I watched it when it came out when I just got the standard Blu-ray, uh, and I hated it. <laughs> I absolutely hated it. I thought it was terrible, um, but this first one is a lot of fun, so um, I ha I'm going to hang on to this, but the second one, ugh. And then we've got this one I picked up in a sale a few years ago. This is really nice. Jumanji. Uh, it's obviously made to look like the the cover of the board game. And it's so cool. It's, it's, it's glossy. And you can see this sort of embossing on these bits. And the title. And just look at that. It's just absolutely glorious. I think on the inside, the inside artwork is the sort of game board which is just really cool no back artwork but it, it does sort of feel authentically like uh, the Jumanji game it's just so nice really good stuff there really love that one I got this for Christmas Good Omens I have never seen a single second of this show because <laughs> I don't have Amazon Prime but I, I wanted to get the Blu-ray anyway and uh, got the Steelbook and it's got some what, uh, 3D lenticular art card is in there well hey uh, and then the back artwork is David Tennant's character there. Michael Sheen on the front. Pretty nice steelbook. Um, I'm looking forward to actually watching this because I really wanted to watch it. Um, but I don't have Amazon Prime, so um, now I can. So that's nice. Uh, another sort of Christmas uh, gift set now, really. It's, it's kind of like a set. Um, they're separate things, but I'll group them together. These aren't in um, protective bags because I think 
for a while. I'm just going to display, display them without them, but um, they will go in bags eventually. And it is these are 4K steelbooks. These are all 4Ks. Batman, 1989. These steelbook designs, I, I, I'm mixed on them because the Batman films of the 80s and 90s had their very, had their own sort of unique interpretations of what Gotham looked like. Um, and this sort of these designs just sort of go for generic city, and the designs are pretty sickly. But it's worth it to get the films on 4K, and the back artwork is really nice. Look at that, just Batman there coming out of the shadows, really nice. And uh, I might as well show you the inside artwork for these because they all sort of match, and they're all of the Batmobile from each respective film. So you've got the 4K disc and Blu-ray disc there. And then you can see that it's the scene where Batman and Vicky are coming out of the um, art museum. And they come see the Batmobile there. And uh, that's on the inside of that. And then we obviously have the sequel, Batman Returns. Similar sort of motif. Back artwork is just good. To be honest, I would probably make the back artwork the front artwork. Because it's just so nice. Um, and then continuing with the theme. 4K disc, Blu-ray disc. And the Batmobile, I presume that's from the bit where the Penguin takes over the Batmobile. Uh, and then the Schumacher films, Batman Forever. Probably the one that suits the uh, this sort of design the best, just because of the big green, green tones to it. Really suits the film. And then the back. And the inside. It's from that opening shot. One of the opening shots when we see Batman and the Batmobile there. 4K disc, Blu-ray disc. And then, Batman and Robin. So, red motif there. Changed it up a bit. We, had, uh, we have actually got Batman and Robin on the back, so that's really cool. And the inside is Batman and the pretty sickly looking Batmobile from this film. Uh, 4K disc, Blu-ray disc. So, yeah, those are those. Um, like I said, the designs are, are not bad. They're just a bit generic, really, and uninspired. But they're, they're a matte finish, so they are quite nice. But yeah. The Transformers, the movie, this thing is glorious. I'm actually going to take this one out of the the packaging for you just so I can show you because you don't really get a sense of how just gorgeous it looks in the uh, in the set of in here. It'll come out. Yeah, looks really nice. Glossy. Till all are one. On the inside as well. Oh, then I showed the digital copy. The disc, yeah, this thing just looks absolutely glor glorious. Really nicely designed. Really love that. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, this is a slipcase steelbook. To reveal it, it's quite glossy. Got Matthew Broderick there. Matthew on the back. And then the inside, it's got the kids there. Really love this film, actually. Should probably rewatch it soon. I've been in the John Hughes mute. John Hughes mute. <laughs> John Hughes mood recently, so I might give it a rewatch some point in the next couple of days. But yeah, it's really nice. Then we've got a sort of another collection that I did stop buying just because the designs were just getting really uninspired um, and a bit dull, so I just stopped buying them entirely. Um, it is the DCEU. I've got the. Well, I might as well show you. I've got the four films starting from Batman v Superman. So I don't have Man of Steel and I don't have anything after Justice League. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty nice. It's sort of reversible. So you've got Superman on one side and Batman on the other side. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. Nothing special or anything. I think it's I think it's a matte finish. Could be glossy. Can't really tell with this uh, bag over it. But yeah, it's pretty nice. Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad are probably films that I wouldn't buy on Steelbook now, but at the time I was just like, oh, gotta get everything on Steelbook. Um, they're not great films, but this 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 Steelbook design is quite nice. This is sort of an explosion of colour with some cool light effects you can see there, and on the back, the prison logo. Yeah, that wouldn't have bought this now, but I have it. So, and then Wonder Woman, great film. Cool design actually, it's got the cool nice border around it you can see there. Uh, again the back artworks just blows the front one out of the water though, look at that. That's absolutely gorgeous. I'd love to have that as like a poster and frame or something. Because that is just like the colours in that. Yeah, that looks great. The front artwork's alright but the, the back artwork, oh that's nice. And then this is the one that sort of made me stop 
buying the DCEU Steelbooks Justice League. It's not great. It's just sort of they've got. There's some cool embossing on it. It's just sort of. I kind of regretted picking this up at the time because the film is not very good <laughs> at all. And it's just not. It's, it's an alright still. But it's just nothing really special, really. So from then on, I just sort of started picking up the just regular releases when they went down in price. Uh, it's not like the MCU where I started collecting them. But uh, yeah, so next sort of pile, we've got The Dark Knight Rises. Really nice there. Very simple still, but, but quite nice all the same. On the back, you've got sort of... Uh, I thought you could see Bane in the shadows, although you can't. But uh, yeah, on the back. I don't think this has been taken out of its bag in a while. Probably won't open this for a long time because I've got the ultimate collection, the Dark Knight Trilogy, which is this big book filled with all sorts of collectibles and notes in it and stuff, which I've been watching for years and recently upgraded to the 4Ks of that trilogy. So this poor little steel book probably won't get watched for a while, but it's nice to have. It's just a nice, cool sort of collectible to have because it's a really nice bit of artwork there. I've always liked that poster artwork with the sort of broken cowl. So yeah, that's quite nice. And now we get into the biggest sort of collection of steelbooks and it is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't have all of them. I've got everything from Doctor Strange onwards and then one film before that. So I'll show you this now. It's probably one of the most valuable items I have in my whole collection of stuff ever. So all in my room, everything. This thing, I cannot believe I actually have it. It is Thor, the Thor steelbook from 2011. This thing's quite rare. And it became quite rare quite quickly. And I'm really, really quite lucky to have this. So that's the it's really, really gorgeous artwork. I love that love that I love when Steelbooks had Wonder Woman had it as well, the sort of border effect around it. Um, and there's some really cool embossing on the title. Yeah, I, I was actually considering picking up like a two quid copy of Thor on Blu-ray just so I could have the disc, but like not open this again, because I it's just too sort of nice to open. Um, and if something ever happened to it, I'd just oh, I'd be heartbroken. Because I almost didn't get this, because I think at the time my dad picked it up, and we went to watch it, and it didn't work. So we exchanged it for another copy. That copy didn't work. We exchanged it for another copy, and that was the copy that finally worked. But it was like, that was like two chances that I nearly didn't get this. And I'm never going to sell it, because it's just... Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous, and the fact that it is so rare, I'm just, I'm so happy to have this. So yeah, that's Thor. And then from here onward, I've got all of the MCU films and steelbooks. So this is Doctor Strange. Really nice, this. Cool uh, embossing on the eye of Agamotto. And some cool light effects there, and on the back. Yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. And the next one, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, they, did, they sort of did start doing this for a while. The steelbooks were like little objects from the film, like that was um, the Eye of Agamotto and then this is obviously the button that you see at the end and Greek sort of there, it says do not person, cool embossing effects on it, look you can see. Uh, and then on the back it's just sort of made to look like the extension of that. Um, they did start doing that for a while, I thought that was going to become a theme for the Marvel steelbooks but that never really happened unfortunately. And then Spider-Man Homecoming. Pretty uninspired, to be honest. They, there was another steelbook that was a lot better than this, but this one came with a magnet, and you can see the space where the magnet would fit, where it's been uh, debossed, and the magnet would fit there. But the magnet's on my fridge, so uh, there you go. Um, another really uninspired one, actually, Thor Ragnarok. It's all right, it's just a bit a bit bland, really. It's probably one of the blandest posters they released for it, and they picked it for the artwork for the steelbook. There's the back. Yeah, pretty disappointing, that one. But the next one more than makes up for it. Black Panther. Really nice. Really shiny. And on the back. Yeah, it's a really great one, actually. I really love the silver sort of tones to it. It actually makes it look like met like steel and metal with sort of paint splashed over it. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, Avengers Infinity War. Pretty cool. The, uh, the Infinity Gems are... The Infinity Stones, sorry. Uh, debossed and Thanos' gauntlet is embossed. It's got a cool border around it. On the back, the faded Avengers logo. Yeah, not what I would have gone for for a steelbook for Infinity War, but it's uh, pretty cool nonetheless. 
Um, this is pretty cool. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Not one of my favourite films in the MCU, but it's uh, quite cool still. But you've got the Wasp there, going from small to big. And then on the reverse, you've got Ant-Man doing the same. Um, so yeah, and there's some cool light effects and the sort of hex hexagonal patterns there. So yeah, this is quite cool. Um, fairly sort of minimalist, but I quite like that. So um, yeah, that's a cool one. Uh, another 4K steelbook now, Captain Marvel. Uh, again, quite minimalist, but quite cool. It's just a basic sort of matte steelbook. Or is it matte? Could be glossy, actually. can't really think. No, I think it is matte. Um, but yeah, this is sort of the first teaser poster they released, really. And on the back, you've got her sort of logo there. So that's pretty cool. Um, I got this before my um, family upgraded to a 4K TV. Um, and I, I left it too late to pre-order, so they ran out of the 3D versions. I had to get the 4K despite not having a 4K TV yet, but it's it, I didn't mind that too much. I had it to future-proof, but it does mean that I have the next one, the next two actually, just sort of looking alone in, in just basic 3D Blu-ray. Uh, but yeah, Avengers Endgame. Kind of disappointing as, as to the end of the Infinity Saga that they choose this as a steelbook artwork. It's alright, but it, it looked a bit cheaply made because... You've just got things that aren't in the film, really. Um, but yeah, it's okay. Back artwork I, I kind of prefer. But they complement each other quite well. Oh, just nearly dropped it. But yeah, Avengers Endgame. Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, yeah, yeah, cool artwork. Pretty eye-popping, right? But <laughs> once you notice this, you can't unnotice it. If you're a fan of the Spider-Man PS4 game, which you should be because it's fantastic... Um, and far better than the MCU films, in my humble opinion. Um, that is just the stolen artwork from that game. You can tell, look at Spidey Mask, it is just from that game that they've sort of repurposed for this artwork. And it's like, it's, once you notice it, you can't unnotice it. And that as well, it's just the... It's it's from promotional artwork from the game that they've just sort of reskinned to look like the Tom Holland version, which is a bit... To be honest... It's a bit lazy, but it's it's a cool little detail that once you notice it, you can't unnotice it. But yeah, it's a pretty eye-catching steelbook, isn't it? Just It's a shame about the stolen artwork. And sort of launching into Spider-Man as a whole, I do have the other Spider-Man films on steelbook as well. So we've got one of... Because I bought the Raimi trilogy so many times. I've bought them, I think I counted like five or six times that I've bought them on various different formats over the years. Um, and this was probably the most egregious uh, example of me double dipping because they're the exact same discs that I have so many times over, but they look nice. So Spider-Man, they've got these lenticular sort of magnets on them, which make it look sort of 3D and cool. And you can take that off and it's sort of got an embossed version of the artwork underneath that. And then on the back, you've got the Green Goblin. And then Spider-Man 2, same sort of theme. Got a cool embossed picture of Spidey. And on the back, Doc Ock. Spider Man 2 is one of my favourite films of all time, so I'm kind of happy to own that in multiple <laughs> versions. Alright, so my camera died. Uh, <laughs> always charge before you film, kids, because now the lighting's screwed up and all on one part of my face, which is just terrible. Um, but anyway, where do we get to? Spider Man 3. There we go. Continuing the theme. Pretty cool, really nice back artwork actually. Uh, and then the Amazing Spider-Man. This is the original steelbook that came out um, on the original release when the film first came out on um, Blu-ray. Pretty cool. It's a wrap around cover actually, so if I uh, open this up you'd see sort of Spidey on a building that sort of stretches all around New York, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, Similar theme to the um, Raimi trilogy. This is the sort of re-release steelbook. Um, and actually, it's a really effective sort of 3D cover there. Sort of Spidey leaping into action. And the back. And it would have been nice if they continued the um, motif of having the villains on the back, but this film's got so many villains, it's, it's probably not enough room. Uh, but yeah. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, otherwise known as the perfect film. Um, yeah, it's really nice. It's uh, got a really nice sort of finish to it. Graffiti sort of elements to it. 
I think this is just a regular blue. I think it's only one disc in here. The 4K um, steel book looked a lot nicer, but that was before I uh, had 4K, so I would have got that, but this is pretty nice all the same. Plus, I, I can't stress this enough. If you haven't seen Spider-Verse, you are missing out. It is... Oh, it's so good. I love it so much. Uh, then, X-Men stuff. Um, we've got X-Men First Class. It's getting old a bit, this still, but this is from the era of sort of 2011 where they <laughs> the, the backs were printed on so you'd have all the blurb and information on the back of the steelbook itself rather than um, a J card which isn't the best but it's X-Men First Class it looks quite nice so yeah it's just a shame about all that all that crap on the front and back because it does sort of take away from it but uh, yes and then the Wolverine Looking really, really nice. Really love this, actually. In the back. Uh, his claws are sort of shiny. And this is sort of similar to the Black Panther one, where it's got this sort of metal finish to it. I know Steelbooks obviously are metal, but, yeah, it's really nice. And uh, The Wolverine's an underrated film, I think. I really I really like this film. Uh, it's especially the extended version, which is on this. The extended version is, uh, I think it's a lot better as a film feels a lot more fleshed out, it feels a lot more the extra violence uh, you, normally I'd be like oh, that doesn't have much, it's just extra violence but it kind of, it, it adds to the tone of this film I think, it, it brings out the sort of darker areas of this film really really quite well uh, I've shown this one before, X-Men Apocalypse pretty nice um, this one, I don't know why this one's so dinged up, it's got quite a few scratches on it you can see there but kind of blends into the sort of uh, metal sort of finish to it but yeah, shown this before on the channel, I think, in my birthday video from a few years ago. Pretty nice. Uh, and this one's really nice, actually. Logan. It's got art by um, Stephen, uh, Steve McNiven, I think. Yeah, it's McNiven. Uh, designs look like a comic book. And it is a wraparound, so it does go across to the other side. There you go. Picture. Yeah, really nice. Really love the artwork on that. The, the likenesses of uh, Hugh Jackman and Daphne Keane. Pretty, pretty, pretty good likenesses, I think. Uh, and Logan is obviously fantastic film. Oh, there we go. Uh, absolutely fantastic film. Um, and while we're on Marvel, I do have Daredevil, the complete first season. Just the J card on the back there, but um, this one's actually really cool. It's got embossing around Daredevil himself and on the title underneath this, and this cool light effect on the blood on his hand that sort of, when you catch it in the right light, it does stand out. So yeah, it's Daredevil Season 1. Uh, the Exorcist, the extended director's cut from 2000. Never actually seen this film. I know, shoot me. Um, I'm probably going to save it till Halloween now to watch it. Uh, but I got this for my birthday earlier this year. Looks really nice still, but though. It's got the sort of famous poster artwork, but drenched in red. I believe it's only the director's cut on this. I don't think it comes with the theatrical version at all. Um... And on the back, uh, yeah, The Exorcist, really nice sort of, it definitely sort of stands out, you've got it on display, it's definitely quite eye-catching with the with the red sort of soaked blood red to it, so yeah. Uh, Skyfall, really nice, got this in a charity shop for £2 and it's in really solid condition actually, there's a few scratches here and there, nothing major, it's really nice on the back, the DP5. Um, doesn't actually come with a Blu-ray, but because I've already got the Blu-ray separately, I thought for two pounds it's a really nice steelbook. Um, although it doesn't come with a disc, I might as well pick it up anyway. Um, so I did, and looks really nice. The only Bond steelbook I own because the I know the other ones were cool. Um, they have really nice artwork, but I already had the Bond fifty set, so I didn't think double dipping was worth it. And the Spectre one was just really bland in my opinion, so I didn't bother with it. Um, we have Star Wars The Last Jedi, love The Last Jedi, love this steelbook, really nice, I think this is the 3D version. Um, I've since upgraded to the, to the 4K version, so this will probably be locked in its uh, packaging forever now, because all the discs are in the 4K version, apart from the 3D one, and I don't have any means to watch 3D films anymore, so um, probably keep this away forever nice and protected because it is quite nice it's got some nice embossing on the title some cool glossy effects on Ray's lightsaber there and uh, 
just a really cool image of 3PO and R2 and BB-8 with Ray on the front and Kylo on the back and then you've got Phasma and some uh, TIE Fighters next to him there. So that's cool. And we're coming to the end now, we're going to video games. Um, this one doesn't, I, I don't know if I'm cheating by including this because uh, it isn't really silver, but it kind of is. It is Mortal Kombat X or Mortal Kombat 10, however you want to say it. It is, uh, I believe it's a metal pack. So it's really nice. You got Scorpion embossed there, really heavily embossed actually. You can sort of see it's really sticking out. Um, you got the title there, and if you, cool thing about this is, if you take it out like this. Oh, there we go. You can just hear it click into place there. It makes the picture really nice. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 10. And then Injustice 2. Similar sort of clear flimsy slipcase to it. And a really cool front cover actually. You got Supergirl there. Looking really badass. I don't think so, yeah. The lighting's a bit shit now that I've moved that I've moved it to charge. But uh, and then on the back, Superman. And there's your game. I was going to say game manual, but it's not, because you don't get manuals anymore, do you? It's just legal guff and sort of DLC codes and things. Um, but the art was quite nice. I'll take the disc out. So, yeah. Injustice 2, great game. I need to play it more, actually. I haven't... I didn't get into... It is great, and I, I do think it is better than the first one, but I, I, I didn't get into it as much as the first one at all. I sort of played it, and then I lost interest in it. Although it is great, I just need to sort of get back into it I guess um, and a similar story with this actually a sequel to a game that I really love that I didn't get into as much Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus really glossy still but really nice actually and it's a really nice motif having the soldier's head with all the sort of characters in there BJ and Anya on the front and on the back there's nothing <laughs> just plain red on the back yeah no um, and the inside artwork is quite nice though um, but yeah, I similar story with this actually to Injustice 2. I really loved Wolfenstein The New Order and I played that a lot and I, I went through and did all the challenges and things. And I was really excited for the second one and I got it and I I, I liked it a lot but I, it didn't... Something about it didn't grab me uh, and I, I never revisited it. I, I think I completed it but I, I don't... It definitely wasn't as memorable as the first one to me. I, I don't know why. Um, I really should sort of play it again. Um, the characters were cool in it. It's just the sort of the vibe of it just didn't gel with me as much as the first one, unfortunately. But yeah, and then the last one, it's pretty wrecked. I got it for very cheap. I just had to get it because it's a nice sort of collectible thing. Batman Arkham City. This is the Xbox 360 copy. So there we go. It's a bit, bit sort of taller than the average still, but but yeah, it's pretty nice. It is a bit wrecked as you can see. It's not been it's not been taken care of really, which is a shame. But the title is nicely embossed. And on the back, the Joker there. And it's really nice. And they did a few versions of this. I think you get Catwoman on the back of one of them. I think one of them had Two Face. And the Penguin, I think, was the other one. Um, but this, this is the best one by far. Really nice image of the Joker there. So, uh, yeah. Right. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. I. Uh, appreciate it a lot. I think that's everything. I, I don't believe I've forgotten anything. Um, I didn't include the Wallace and Gromit DVD steel book that I have uh, just because it doesn't really count to be honest. It's just this... it's in my other video and I, I don't... I think I still have it but I can't find it anywhere. It's definitely not on display anyway. For those of you who don't know, it was the, the TV series World of Invention that they did and it was just series one of that in a, in a fairly nice but you know, fairly unremarkable DVD steelbook. Um, that it's in my other video, so you can go and see it there if you want. But this is sort of my main steelbook collection. I've just got them all surrounding me now. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. If if I've missed anything off, I'll obviously add it into this video later. But um, yes, if you did enjoy looking at my collection, please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, and I.